Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG. Today, we're going to take a look at using WinLink peer-to-peer. Recently, the county out here asked us to participate in a drill, and that drill was to be able to send data between our EOCs. Now, normally, we would have done that via just regular old packet, but they kind of threw us a little bit of a twist and wanted a few different uh, FEMA forms to be sent back and forth. And we reviewed uh, Outpost and some of the other methods that we had to do that, and we kind of decided that maybe WinLink peer-to-peer -peer would be a better solution for this. Now, we'd never tried it before. Uh, of course, we played with it. But we never really tried to do it at this kind of level. So we learned a lot during that drill. Now, the good news is we pretty much were able to send every message. Um, you know, the learning portion of it was what we went through to make all that work. And I want to take a little time to share that with everybody. All right. So with that, let's go ahead and we're going to slide in to... WinLink point to point. All right. Well, you know what? We got WinLink set up here. Now, the real question is how do you get WinLink set up? Well, this video isn't going to tell you how to do that. We've got a video on that, and I put the link down in the comments. So if you've never set up WinLink or done anything like that, I encourage you to watch that video first because you're really going to want to experiment with WinLink a little bit before you jump into doing peer-to-peer uh, -peer WinLink. So I'm going to go down here on my pull-down where it talks about sessions, and I am going to take a look at packet P2P. And what you're going to notice when I open the session is it looks almost identical. Um, although, you know, uh, there are some things you have to understand when you're doing packet P2P. So let's go ahead. I'm going to close this up and we're going to send a message. All right. So I'm going to compose a message here. And up here, where it says send as, it says WinLink message. But this isn't a WinLink message. We are actually sending this peer-to-peer. -peer. So we have to make sure, and this is very important, this here, right here, is a gotcha. If you don't have this set to peer-to-peer -to -peer for every message you're sending peer-to-peer, -peer, they're not going to go right. Okay? So... Uh, I can choose who I'm going to send it from. We'll do more on that in a little bit. And I'm just going to send a really basic message, okay? And that message is going to be to... Oh, by the way, you have to make sure that you address this message to the peer station you're going to connect to. Now, the peer station I will be connecting to is W6KME dash 15 so we have an ssid on this station and more on that in a minute also i'm going to hit tab it's fine with that and i'm just going to put an initial test send from ag6 ag and i'm going to say stew and i'm going to go ahead and remember very important peer-to-peer -peer message, address it to who you're connecting to and who they're going to be listening as in their peer-to-peer -peer session. I'm going to go ahead and post it to the outbox. I'm going to open the session. And again, W6KME-15 is who they're listening as. And we'll show more about listening in a second, right? And I'm going to hit start. And if everything's right, what's going to happen here is it's going to connect. It's going to know that it has a message to send to this. And as we wait, it should go ahead and receive the message. Summed up. There it went. I just popped that message off. So, very cool. 
It says down at the bottom there, right? I sent one message and bada bing, bada boom. We're all set to go. Now, as long as I have this open as peer-to-peer, -peer, I am also broadcasting, and what I am broadcasting is this up here in parentheses up at the top, this K6BCS. That is what we're looking at, okay? But we found a huge problem. So we utilize a... Uh, club call sign for all the EOCs in uh, our area. It's all the same club call sign. And we use that for WinLink as well. Um, and what we found, ironically, was um, we also use that club sign for our packet stations as their programmed call sign. So when we would listen to the base call sign, all of the packet stations, or excuse me, when we would transmit to or try to connect to the base call sign, all of the packet systems would answer and we wouldn't be able to get the peer-to-peer uh, -peer message through. So we discovered something down here on the far top left side. If I go down to the pull down for call sign and it says I can add a call sign, I can just add... the call sign that is set up on this, dash, and whatever SSID I want. I hit tab. Now, here's the tricky part. I have to use the same password for this as the password for the K6VCS root account. If I do that, when I hit tab, everything's going to be populated. And if I have any registration codes or anything else or Winlink, uh, for Winlink Express, I can paste in the main one right here and I won't get the nag when I restart. So another important thing, if you're running peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, I like when I'm using Winlink, I like to display a list of pending incoming addresses, which is this right here. It's this checkbox up at the top. And if I check that, it's going to create a problem if I'm listening peer to peer. So I don't want that checked. I've got a decent initial setup going here. I'm going to click update, and it's going to transfer into that call sign. And that call sign is now up here. So all my settings, okay, are gone for different things it remembers, like phone books and stuff like that. But my setup for TNCs exists still under this call sign, okay? So the ones that were there before are still there. Now, something else I can do, and we found this very useful, is I can go into WinLink Express, and we have tactical addresses that we have programmed in for our EOCs in Winley. And I happen to have one that I use uh, mostly for training, which is VCEDU. Okay, and that's, our, that's for our training um, PBBS, as well as if you want to send a Winlink message to me, you could send it to VCEDU at winlink.org. Now, this password, of course, is typically different than the one of the main account. And we'll go ahead and click Save. And when I click Update, if I got the password and everything in there right, it should just be all set to go. All right. So now, if I use my pull down here and I go to Packet Peer-to-Peer, -peer, and I hit open session, you'll notice up in the top bar, it tells you that I am listening on uh, K6VCS-15 for peer-to-peer -peer connections, right? Very cool. Now, let's get to the real meat here. So, I need to send an ICS-213 to... Um, 
that other station, which is W6KME-15. All right, so how do I do that? Well, step one actually is just to click on New Message. And there it is. Now, I told you about the gotcha. Send as. I want to make sure that this is set to a peer-to-peer -peer message. If it isn't, and I make a peer-to-peer -peer connection to who it's addressed to, guess what? It's not going to send it. So this is really important to remember. Okay, This is a huge gotcha if you're doing this. Now, interestingly enough, though, I now have that tactical. So it says it's from K6VCS-15. I can say, send it from VCEDU. All right. Now, there's some confusing things here that we have to just get out of the way. All right. If the far side tries to connect to me peer-to-peer -peer as VCEDU, I won't answer. Okay. I won't. I will only answer to what I have up here in the top, which is the K6VCS15 call sign. So it's good from a visual and administrative standpoint to make it appear to come from VCEDU, okay? So they have a reference when they're looking at it in the inbox as to who it's actually from. But it doesn't really give them a whole heck of a lot on sending it back. But we'll, we'll take a look at that in a second. All right? So I don't worry about the two or anything just yet. What I'm going to do here is I am going to select a template. I'm going to go to standard templates and into my ICS USA forms. And I'm going to select the 213. And... My browser will pop up, and I can set up here what's going to be across the top. Okay, so you see it says general message. I'll hit setup, and I'm just going to put in drill three times, right? And then that's going to be right up at the top. Now, the incident, I'm also going to put drill three times. I don't want anybody to get the assumption that this is real, okay? Now, you're going to put in whatever they're telling you, all right? So, for name and position, what I like to do is I like to say two, and I put in, in um, basically parentheses, right? I put in the call sign I'm mailing to, which is w 6 kme dash 15, Whoop. and then close parentheses, and then who's sending it. So I'll say, uh, we'll just say, we'll say Captain uh, Bob, and then I'm going to give his permission, uh, his position as incident commander. Okay. Now, from, and that's going to be B, C, E, D, U. Now, I also can put something like this in here. And I would do that to make sure they knew who they had to connect to, okay? Now, this is going to be something that's going to be decided by whoever uh, is putting together the exercise out of how to address this and things like that. Why do I want them in here? Well, when I get the message, well, I'll show you. That's the best way to do it. So let me just finish this up. This is going to be from, um, uh, let's see, we'll say... Uh, Sergeant Bill, 
and he is uh, OPR, okay? Now, the message is going to be ta need uh, toilet paper. Why not? And I'm going to add drill, drill, drill. I can click here. It's going to give me the current date. I can click here. It's going to give me the current time. And um, uh, we are out of toilet paper at this EOC. Please let us know when it will be available. And I would basically put my information in here as, oh, and actually I would not. See, I'm used to doing this different ways, but this would basically just be the message. I've already said who it's from, okay? This was approved by me, and I am the operator, so that means that uh, I am approving this message to go out. And then I'll just hit submit. It tells me that the completed form will go to the uh, mail sent. I can now close the browser. All right, but you notice something. There's nothing in the to line, so I need to say where it's going. And it will be going to W6 KME 15. And by the way, much thanks to Keith, W6 KME, for setting this up so we could do this to show you all this stuff. So, oh, and by the way, let's say I wanted to broadcast this out. Let's say I was net control and I wanted to broadcast it out to a whole number of these peers that are listening. I could with making one message, just put in multiple destinations here in two and then post to Outbox. And what would happen, well, let's put another one in just to give a demonstration. W6RH, um, uh, okay, as the second one. And I'm going to go ahead and I've got it set for peer-to-peer. -peer. I've double-checked that. I've shown that it's from. My from is VCEDU and I'm going to post to the Outbox, Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead. I know that W6KME-15 is listening. I'll hit start. I'm connected. And I'm sending it. And that will now show up in his inbox. And this actually works pretty quick when you think about it. We're sending this via a packet. And, you know, mind you, this is a small form, but it actually is doing exactly what we wanted. Now I'm sitting here ready to receive so if he wants to respond back to me, he can receive. Now, remember we had two in the outbox. Now we have one in the outbox. And that's the one that's going to W6RH P2P. So it created both of them. Now, let's talk about the confusion, okay, that you might have if you didn't put the to and from information in to the form. So you notice now, okay, I can see who it was to and who it was from. And most importantly, I can see what they're listening on, how they're going to listen for a response, okay? And this is very important. If I don't know this address, okay, this call sign address, I won't be able to make my point to point. All right. So that's a quick overview, and let me just show you how it works on a receive. All right.
so we now have a connection. It looks like we're going to get a reply. And here we go. I am receiving the reply. Oh, this is awesome, right? So we'll get this open as soon as the reply is done. And I'm always told patience is a virtue. This really isn't that slow, though, when you think about it. Imagine trying to do all of this information via phone, right? You know, uh, it would take a while doing this voice. So, boom, pops up immediately. So, there's the reply. Request for toilet paper received and forwarded. Uh, please like and subscribe. Please like and subscribe. Ah, well... <laughs> Well, thank you, Keith. Yes, please like this video and subscribe. Of course, I'll beat you up on that later. All right, so I understand that he will be sending a form back. Ah, looks like he's connecting. Will you look at that? All right. Yes, there is an email coming. There it comes. Now again, this usually takes about 30 seconds to complete. And like I said, uh, trying to do that via phone might be difficult. But look at that. I have a brand new message there. So let's go ahead and open it up. And by the way, I opened this by hitting the file attachment. And there it is. And let's see, test sending an IC213. <laughs> Be sure to smash that bell icon so you'll get notifications when new content is released. Oh, I love it. So you notice, right, uh, the two has uh, the, uh, well, he kind of put this in wrong, but that's okay. Um, doesn't much matter the way he has this set up. It, all that really matters here is that we have the information. Now, in a normal case, we would print this out and hand it to whoever the destination was. Now, down here, I would like to reply. If I click, it tells me how. It's fairly simple. All I really need to do is go back to the main menu, and I can, let's see... Uh, if I highlight it here and go to message, I can hit reply and it will pop it up and I can put my reply right here. And I'm just going to say thanks for the plug. And replied by. Slash. Uh, K six B C S dash fifteen title A G A G six A G operator, and I can place the date and time right here, like so, and then I can submit. Now from here. We can just close this, and since it's a reply, it's going to go right back to him. Now, you have to remember, though, that this needs to be set to peer-to-peer, -peer, and this two-line has to be to either one of his tacticals that he has programmed for his station or his uh, listening call sign, right? So with that, this is all in here. I can post to Outbox. I need to put in his listening call sign, W6KME-15. And then I can go ahead and click Start. And here we go. And we're going to send him a reply. So, truthfully, that's really how... Simple this is. Yeah, there's some gotchas, but you know what? Once you get past those gotchas, well, it's just like doing any other thing that we do in MCOM.
with that, hey, let's go ahead and do the tail out, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Well, wow, huh? Um, well, I think you got asked to subscribe a whole mess in that last video, so I'm not going to beat you up over that anymore. Um, but uh, many thanks to Keith. Uh, W6KME for helping with this and making uh, making it possible for me to show a lot of stuff that would have been very difficult to show uh, inside my little shack here. So uh, with him participating, it really expanded things out. Now, this is not the end-all, beat-all. There's lots of stuff that you need to understand about this, and there are probably going to be variations on how your uh, areas are going to want to do the uh, ICS 213s or whatever form you're using. Uh, but this gives you a good foundation on building peer-to-peer. -peer. Anyway, with that, my name is Stu, AG6AG. Thanks for watching, and gosh, hope to hear you out there on the air.